are you abroad and you're looking at starting your master's degree in the United Kingdom then this is the right video for you if you start your application and a bit confused on how to navigate around it this is also the right video for you so do make sure you stay to the end of this video so you can understand what the process is like and what mistakes you're about to make Hi everyone, if you're new to my channel, you're most highly welcome and if you've been a subscriber, I love you so much. Please do make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're a new viewer and watch this video to the end like I said earlier. So let's go straight to the business. Now the first thing you need to do in regards to you know making your applications to study for your masters in the United Kingdom is to you know make a good research. That's what I do recommend people to do. You can always do this by yourself. You don't need an agent to do it for you. But sometimes we do need agents you know I'm not trying to criticize or say agents are not necessary but what I'm trying to say is you can always do it by yourself saving yourself some penny you know although there are some agents as well that do not actually take you know um, that do not take money for it so if you you know come across such agents and you still believe you need to you know use such agents then that's absolutely fine but you need to understand the constraints that are behind using agents there are also disadvantages as much as well as their advantages so what i'm going to do i'm going to make a video as well about the advantages and disadvantages of using an agent to apply for your master's degree anyways for this video let me go straight to the business so the first thing you need to do is to make a proper research what university do i want to go into what course do you want to study what are you looking at getting you need to you know put those things into consideration do your own research go online type it on it you know um let me say for example public policy must ma in public policy in the uk it's going to give you a lot of universities and then you get to pick what university you know it's more paramount to you do you want an university up north do you want a university up south do you want a university that's well recognized in this particular aspect of your um interest so it just depends on what you're interested in and then whilst you've identified at least three universities of your choice then it is also recommended that you can actually apply to up to five universities at the same time so you're not limited to just applying to one university now it's time to make your application go on the website go on the university's website start your application whilst you're doing this make sure you're getting all your documents ready you need a couple of documents to do this you need a personal statement so in your personal statement you know this is just uh, a statement that you know literally the university wants to understand who you are what you want to get and what you want to take that course if you're having problems in getting your personal statement if you don't understand what a personal statement is and you need some assistance in your personal statement do feel free to you know get in contact with me and i'll be more than happy to help you in that process now the next thing you need to make sure you're doing is whilst if you're literally like you're doing your undergrad right now do make sure you're starting to get your transcript once you're finished Make sure you don't leave it to the nine minutes and start running, you know, helter skelter to get this document because sometimes it's pretty much difficult to get a hold of it after some time. So make sure you start chasing your transcripts, have your transcripts ready with, you know, for your undergraduate degree because you need that undergraduate degree to get into the university. Check out the university's criteria because they usually have that on their website. So if your undergraduate degree is not appropriate enough or if the if you haven't gotten the necessary um the necessary level like the necessary points needed for you to get on that master's program then there's no point of you applying to that university you might as well apply to an university that actually you know takes your degree or you know acknowledge your degree you don't want to waste your time applying to an university that actually you know takes only first class students meanwhile you're a third class student there's nothing wrong with a third class student there are a lot of investors that are actually taking third class students so to make sure you do that research and just apply to the university that takes you know second class third class first class whatever you know degree you've gotten from your undergraduate degree they're willing to take you in so make sure you do that research and then start your application on that university Whilst you're getting your transcripts ready, you need to also get your letter of recommendation. This letter of recommendation is usually like two letters. I think it depends on the Some universities actually allow you to have just produce one letter of recommendation. It could just be like your, you know, your supervisor from your undergraduate degree or your lecturer or somebody. 
but usually you can get two recommendations so whilst you're in university do not just not become limited with your lecturers and supervisors or something you need them you need these people to recommend you so you need a letter from universities but i think some universities have appropriate bodies so regardless your head of department or something is you know is designated to actually produce that letter to you but however it depends on how you invest it depends on how big your university is depends on how accessible these people are then you need to make sure you you know you're on track with it you don't want to get stuck at some point also you can get letter recommendation if you start working maybe from your workplace you need to get a letter recommendation from your employer so make sure you have those things checked and have them with you don't leave it to like that in minutes because you're gonna get stuck Another document you need to have is a valid passport. So if you don't have a valid passport, that's your international passport, then obviously you're going nowhere. Obviously you can't submit your documents to the embassy once you get your cast. Make note that this document I'm saying earlier on are just for your, you know, to get your cast. So the confirmation of acceptance of studies is what the cast is. So this is what the university gives to you when they've actually accepted you to study in their university. Before they actually accept you, to study in their university what they usually want is to you know verify these documents and make sure they're valid and make sure you're a genuine student so you need to produce all these documents to the university and then the university then produce to you your cast which is the confirmation acceptance of studies and it's the cast you then use as well with all the documents to take to the embassy to apply for your visa now another document you need for the university is the english proficiency you know test However, there are certain countries, you know, you don't need to do tests like the SAT, the IETLS, because you've got, um, you've got like, you've got uh, a recognized English body. So, for example, in Nigeria, they do accept, some universities do accept the, the West African Examination Kansu exam. So, uh, Kansu exam. <laughs> so, this is um, the exam you take after your secondary school um, program so yes this is actually acceptable in the United Kingdom but not all universities actually accept it so do make sure you check with that university because it can be very frustrating to have gone through that process and then realize that this university does not even accept my certificate so at that point you're like where do I start from because to take the IETLS you need to you know have at least you know maybe an extra three months or six months or something if you can get that certificate so you definitely need to check that you have those things on board on applying to the right university if you're a bit confused trust me you can always eat them an email and the secret is always start your application on time because when you leave it to that dying minute then obviously you get stuck and you're not you know you get get really confused on what to do and how to go about it so i would always, I'd always advise you to start on time so you have enough room to you know send them an email you ask them questions that's you're literally paying your fees for it or if you're getting a scholarship you're paying for that service so feel free to you know message them email them there's nothing wrong in that they've got you know telephone numbers as well you can always call them to get more clarity to setting questions another thing you need as well is your statement of purpose I know some people actually you know kind of you know conflict these statements of purpose with your personal statement they are two different things yes it can be complicated so there are two different things make sure you do your research to understand what you need to write in your statements of purpose and your personal statements do not contradict it and trust me like i said earlier it's not difficult but like i said again if you need help with any of these things do feel free to get in contact with me so once you have all these documents you know completed obviously you need your certificates as well which i haven't mentioned definitely you need your undergraduate certificate now, once you've gotten all these documents, you know, to submit to the university and then you get your CAS. Now, the problem now is back back then, whilst I was applying to do my stuff, uh, you didn't need to show any proof for uh, your finances to the university. You only need to show the proof to the embassy. But what's happened now is you need to show that proof to the university before the university can actually give you your CAS. So this step is kind of changed. So make sure you have that as well in your account so you don't get stuck because they're not going to tell you that. They're just going to tell you at some point, okay, you know what, send us a bank statement. And this bank statement has, you know, must literally have the money for like a month before you can get your CAS and then apply to the embassy. So make sure you have all these things ready. You have your finances ready. Even if you don't have it ready, you know, start working towards it. Don't leave it to the dying minute because you're going to get stuck. 
and stressed out so make sure you have all these things planned out and very accurate i'm going to try and put in some links as well that could help as well in your application process and if you've got any all that um if you've got any other problems or worries or concerns or questions feel free to drop them down in the comment section i'll be more than happy to respond to you as soon as i can and if you come to the uk for your master's degree in the social sciences and you need any help in the social sciences i'm here to help you if you do but if not i wish you good luck if you're about to come as well if you're already on that path journey i wish you good luck i wish you the best of time in the uk and I just wish you good luck again <laughs> so do not make sure you know do make sure you don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you've got any other questions i'm here and see you soon